Okay, I will be talking about the open power working groups. So I'll be giving a, a brief overview of the working groups we have within the foundation. Um, the ones that we are, that are function, well, that are been up for a while, the one that we envision to start um, and give you a little bit more information on how you can participate and how this um, can be beneficial to you also. So first thing, um, yeah, I'm Toshan Barvani. I am the TSC chair um, since 2020. Um, I'm mostly a software consultant. Um, I've done a lot of software stuff. Um, my interest in hardware is more um, on running software on hardware. So how to optimize software. Um, and that's how I got involved in the foundation um, because we have our own Linux distribution for power. Um, so a small introduction to what the foundation is. Uh, the foundation is was founded in 2013. We have more than 300 members. Um, these 300 members are the core um, and participate in what we call working groups. Working groups are um, initiatives where members come together to work together. Um, and in 2019, there was a slightly uh, new leadership. So a few people changed within the foundation, focusing more on uh, different um, parts of, of the ecosystem, um, where initially the foundation was more specification driven. Um, the, the newer approach is to have reference designs, have maybe even some products come out, um, have more focus on software um, in combination with hardware and have a, a whole new interaction system with uh, a community. Um, it doesn't mean that what the foundation did was bad. Um, obviously you need to have specifications and we will still be having a lot of work groups doing specifications. Um, it's just that once the a foundation becomes more mature, we also need to evolve into newer aspects um, and reach out to a wider community um, than the one that we have been focusing on. Here are the board members. Um, you see that there are obviously big companies involved there, uh, but we have a very good academic um, following. Um, and we also have some other manufacturers um, like Raptor Computing, which sell um, mid-class power systems. So what was the, the intention of this revamping is to create a more open ecosystem. Um, we are the Open Power Foundation, so we want to create an open power architecture. Um, we still will be doing a lot of specifications and documentation around the architecture. Um, however, we will also start doing reference designs. Um, so you have seen a few of the projects already. I'll go over them briefly again. Um, and the reason why we want to do that is because we want to create more value for the uh, members. Um, obviously, we will keep um, our focus area on the academic world. And you see a lot of curriculums being announced. Um, we hope that more academic institutes can actually start teaching uh, the power architecture across um, their uh, education and that makes us more multidisciplinary. Um, we want to create developer communities um, and for that we are going to have some landscapes which I'll show actually in the next presentation. Um, and these are more like where can you find some of the software, where can you find some of the hardware um, how do you get access to it? Um, we also want to help the, the, the silicon and the chiplet community. Um, and uh, we have had some initiatives where we have been able to open source cores. We have been able to open source some of the um, memory segments. Um, and we want to push that forward to opening up a whole bunch of these uh, silicon solutions, um, as you've heard also in many other presentations today. So moving forward, we, we want to open up on the entire stack, but we also want to have connections to other uh, entities. Um, so OpenCopy uh, Consortium, the Linux Foundation, 
uh, OCP, CXL consortium. Um, we want to do more about software enablement. Um, so most people who are within the community know that mo majority of the software just runs on power. Uh, but for the outside world, that is not always that easy. And people don't think of that. Um, if we are listed as a first class citizen, that would be much better. Um, another thing is we want to run the foundation on open power technology. Um, and we will not be just enterprise focused. So you will see a lot of initiatives where smaller uh, projects will come out and um, well, not just on enterprise. It doesn't mean that the enterprise focus will disappear. It just means that we want to go broader than that. So an overview, um, we have three different type of working groups. Um, the technical working groups, which are the ones which the foundation has been focusing for a long time on. Um, they, their main and primary goal is creating technically spe technical specifications. And so their output is also these technical specifications in the documents um, that many of you have already seen and are aware of. And then we have these new uh, working groups like the special integration groups, um, which will implement these technical specifications in a more reference design or even in ready to use products um, like one of the other um, six will be doing. So the output is mostly code or design or even some end product that can be more tangible than a, a document of specifications. And then the last but not least uh, working group are birds of the feather. Um, so this is basically places we want to create uh, discussions um, and we want to have uh, inter-community discussions. Um, we want to have one for, for open cars, for instance, and for uh, other type of cars that are open. Um, but that could also be academic discussion boards where students can get involved and know what, what is available, what isn't available. So there's a, a whole bunch of them that we envision. This is a, a, a short uh, overview of everything. Um, so we have the board of the directors on, on the top. Um, and then we have the steering committee. Um, so I'm the chair of the technical steering committee. Uh, we have marketing, which helps out on events like this. Um, but also um, is busy revamping the website and making a nicer look, making it easier for people to find things. Um, so that's there. Um, the ambassadors, which we will be starting um, most likely next year. So we came up with this idea um, during the Corona crisis, uh, but then thought that it might not be useful to actually implement that. Um, so the ambassadors will be people locally who you can uh, contact who will then be able to promote also open power. Um, we hope that once the Corona um, crisis is completely ended, we can do meetups and smaller gatherings where people can just come together and discuss some of the, the things that they want to learn or get together for. And then we have the three types of working groups. Um, so birds of a feather, these are mostly discussion groups um, around a specific topic um, like open cores, uh, but also like open distribution. Um, many of the distributions are tackling the same problem. Um, let's work together so that we can combine our efforts and solve the problems quicker. Um, but also like how can they be, how, how can open power be used in physical sciences or in any other academic research, um, which we already have some members doing this. Then we have the technical work groups. So these are work groups, like I said, which produce more specifications. Um, and these specifications then get translated into special integration groups, which actually create more reference designs and more um, tangible products. Um, we have, for instance, also here, the accelerator technical work group which uh, we want that they take the specifications that come out of the CXL consortium or the Open Copy consortium accelerators and basically translate that to power uh, optimized versions. Um, and then that specification can then be consumed by one of the other integration groups to further their uh, adoption. Um, you, Todd just gave a presentation about LibreBMC. 
Um, so that's linked with the OCP DCSM um, initiative. Uh, but we have also the hub, which will start up soon, where we will have several providers that will be able to help open source products, uh, sorry, open source projects. Um, and that's here the open source initiatives where they can get access to power, can make sure that the software actually runs on power, um, and even in the long term get that fully integrated in a CI CD pipeline, whereby they, they use the the, the same functionality and the same workflow that they are today used to using. Um, for the memory uh, sake, it's OMI. So from the Open Copy Consortium, which they will focus on, um, machine learning will then look at the LF, AI and data to work together on so that there is a cooperation with them. Um, the HPC SIG, which uh, will, would cooperate then with the OCP uh, HPC project. Um, and then similarly, we have a whole bunch of other SIGs which we are looking at starting um, and getting more traction and more adoption of those uh, parties that are involved there. So here's an overview. Um, the ones with a single star have are in the pipeline to be started up. The ones with a double star are a little bit more long-term. Um, so we are we're looking there for more uh, participants and uh, people to show more interest before we'll start them. The ones with a single star should be up by end of the year. Um, the, the hub, for instance, is one which is in the pipeline. Uh, the power pie, which I will come back a little bit later, is also a very much in demand, um, but that will still take us a, another month to get that started up. Um, and so we, we are making sure that all these working groups get started. Um, so the working groups, um, we have the hub SIG, which is being started up. Uh, Lance Albertson is the chair. It's the idea that we can provide power system, provide access to power systems. Um, so we don't actually provide the system, but just access to them. Um, and then the idea is that we can make our first class citizen again. Um, and the idea is that they also go out to the community, uh, maintain relationships with the communities, um, see how we can add support for certain things on power um, where needed or just make sure that it is available uh, by default so that people who are using uh, these technologies can just uh, with a one click um, get this or even get this completely through their distribution. Uh, Libra BMC SIG, um, which is chaired by Todd Rosendahl, um, and Carol Google. Um, they built, the idea is to build an open source base management controller, so a BMC. Um, the idea is to use an FPGA board so that it can follow a more software-based approach. Um, and it uses MicroWatt as the soft core. Um, it's fully open source, the software, the hardware. So you can find the DCSCM uh, board on GitHub. Uh, you can find the interposer card also on GitHub or on our uh, open power Git. Um, everything is fully open source. Documentation is still being worked on. Some of it is already there. Some of it is not yet there. Um, the idea is to get a full Linux distribution working on such a card. Um, so it would make it again easier for people to um, get an FPGA, start playing with power, um, and this would make it the adoption easier. Todd gave a presentation uh, with much more detail about the actual project. Uh, the memory SIG, which is chaired by Pierre-Luc Cantil. Um, so they, they are looking at how memory acceleration can be uh, helped on power systems. Um, they're also engaging on the adoption of OMI, um, given that OMI is currently available in uh, some Power 10 machines um, and getting a better ecosystem to adopt that from a software perspective and from a hardware perspective. Um, also maybe create some more proof of concept designs so it's easy for people to actually uh, consume and understand how they can use that uh, technology. Uh, the machine learning, work, uh, work, machine learning and AI working group uh, chaired by Lionel Clavier. Um, 
they're also busy doing rechartering and they will focus on how um, machine learning and AI can be optimized on power. So which are the best workloads to run there, uh, document how it can be used in general, uh, making sure that the software is aligned and optimized for it. Um, and then working with the LF AI data team to make power a first class citizen, um, which for many projects may be the case, but also keep that up. Um, so some projects we, we see that they do the effort to actually get this working on power, uh, but then forget about it. So if we have it in a CI CD pipeline, if we have people actually looking at that, that would make it much easier and better for us in the long term. The power pie, uh, SIG. So this is the idea that we have where we want to create a small uh, single board computer similar to a, uh, to a Raspberry Pi. Um, now I say similar because um, it's not going to be exactly the same. Um, it will most likely be a slightly bigger board. Um, like James mentioned in his introduction, we are looking at a target of um, 200, uh, sorry, $150, um, and we, well, at this point, we, we don't have a fully functional uh, system or even a prototype ready, so we are still busy with the designs. Um, there's a whole bunch of debates going on. Uh, should it be dual core? Should it be quad core? Um, can we integrate OMI? Um, do we want an actual B BMC or even a, a DCSM connector? Um, but the idea is that you have an enablement platform for, des uh, for developers that they can put under their desk. Um, as you may have seen, we do have an initiative with the AC922, which is available in the US and in Europe for the moment. Uh, but of course, that's still a much larger price tag than what we are targeting with this. Um, also, this board would hopefully um, then flow into other projects where it can be consumed for different purposes. Um, I write here several versions and several generations. Um, so we, the, it might be that we, for speed, make certain decisions to get this board out quicker that are not um, the best uh, from an open source perspective. Uh, we hope that the board will be fully open source in its first generation, uh, but that might not be possible. And then we will make sure that a later generation is fully open source. The HPC SIG, um, the chair for the moment is Alan Cantle. Um, he's also the chair at the OCP end. Um, so we basically want to make sure that uh, all the efforts that have been put in creating um, a very good ecosystem for power in the HPC world remains there. Um, build also some more reference designs and uh, machines or reference machines that can uh, be optimized for HPC workloads. Uh, make sure that the adoption of software remains and that we are um, as best available as possible. Um, and then also get more adoption of OMI, given that the HPC world is very interested in this. Um, so this will most likely be one of their uh, points that they would like to see. We then move to the technical working groups. So Sandy uh, Woodbird is our chair for the compliance work group. Um, it's mostly for creating test harnesses, test suites, uh, having documentation on how to comply with specific rules, having checklists for specifications and integrations, um, but also um, given that the ISA has now come within the uh, Open Power Foundation, uh, make sure that, for instance, cars that are available can be uh, made compliant with the ISA. Um, so that's some future work that might come. The ISA work group. So um, this is the fact that IBM has contributed the um, power ISA to the Open Power Foundation. Um, and in that, we, we have a specific work group for that. So Paul Macaris is the chair there. Um, we have, well, he has been mostly converting the FrameMaker uh, document into a LaTeX document. 
um, at which point once that's a little bit more mature, um, uh, a lot of source code can even be made available to the outside world. Um, we are in the midst of a new RFC process um, where we will have private RFCs, but also public RFCs, uh, like mentioned by Luke's um, presentation on SVP64, where it is possible for um, non-members of the foundation to also contribute to the ISA. Uh, we would like to open up documentation. So now documentation is a little bit fractured. Some of it is open, some of it, some of it isn't. Um, and so we, we want to open up that documentation, create it properly uh, and make it also a little bit interactive. Um, and we, we are always happy to get feedback from core designers. So if you have any feedback, you there's, there are actually ways that you can give feedback to the working group without being a member. Um, while the voting is limited to specific members and, and with voting, I mean like voting on the RFCs, um, anyone uh, can contribute, uh, anyone can help out. Um, uh, so don't be afraid to join the work group if you are a member um, and you can help out um, with, for instance, the conversion. You can also think and give suggestions about RFC processes or make other suggestions. So um, it's not just the voting members that participate in, in work groups. We have the hardware architecture technical work group, which creates specifications around reference hardware um, and also creates uh, specifications about implementations of standard components on the platform. Um, we hope that the work group can do a few more things like create reference designs for actual hardware that can be put into production. Um, we are not yet at that stage, but we hope that the work group will evolve next year to do that. The Accelerator work group, which is chaired by Kurt Wolbrink. Um, it has heavy discussions on how to implement uh, acceleration. Um, so there's a, always uh, each party which wants their acceleration to be the best. Um, Alan Cantel gave, gave a presentation in the introduction, in the keynotes. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, as a power community, we would like all accelerator frameworks to be available um, if they can be ported to, to power. So the work group will actually look at uh, the frameworks where there's interest from the members and look at how these specifications can be implemented on power. So yes, um, the idea of this is that, that people can get an idea of what are the working groups, um, how you can join, um, in the next presentation, I'll be going over some of the web updates um, and there you will see where you can find most of the information. Um, we hope to have a single page on the, on the front page where you can navigate through, see all the work groups and get all the resources and the links to the actual um, work group, um, work group specific uh, sub subsections. Uh, thank you. Are there any questions? Okay. Given that I don't see any questions, I will move to the next presentation.